Hey guys, what's up? My name's Grant Borland, and today I kind of want to take a look at my five favorite like YouTube channels for like music production type uh, work. You know, I think in this day and age, it's no surprise that a lot of different music producers and such go to YouTube to you know learn new tricks or new production techniques and all that stuff. You know, there's just so much like content based on that kind of stuff nowadays. So there's just, you know just an infinite amount of resources to learn things as far as music production goes. I kind of wanted to make a list of like the top five that I find myself going to a lot to learn new things. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to make this video about, so. My first one is a YouTuber, musician, artist named Giannis Rasmussen. I found Giannis Rasmussen kind of back in the day through his music, um, and then later on in life figured out that he had a YouTube channel where he would create uh, like production tutorials and track walkthroughs and stuff like that. He's a part of a, uh, a project with Olafur Arnold called Chiasmos and they kind of make like light minimal house music. I've actually kind of mentioned their stuff before in previous videos of mine but when I found that he had a YouTube channel I you know dove right into it to see you know what kind of things he would talk about and I've learned a lot of cool um, production tricks and techniques. Actually one of the more recent tricks I've learned from you know his advice was uh, there was a walkthrough of his track loop that he wrote with Oliver Arnolds and there was a part in the song where like everything was building and they had like these synth elements that were running through this, I believe it was like a Roland like R201 or 301 tape delay kind of thing. But basically what they would do is they would like turn the feedback up on it and basically this signal would kind of delay and spiral out of control and it was just this crazy mess. But they kind of used that and automated that to kind of get crazy as a build or almost kind of like a riser. Like it was just a different take on like essentially a riser. We're recording the Juno uh, through the Space Echo and recording it with the feedback button. So we're actually doing long recordings while we're playing the feedback button, right? Yes. And you can see those tails there. These are the feedbacks that we're just going nuts with and making these huge tails. Maybe we just go to the breakdown so we can hear these lovely tails because they are really amazing actually. They have so much texture and dirt in them. It starts to uh, do these kind of different harmonies. Self-oscillating almost, right? This this last stab there. Yeah, that's self-oscillating <clears throat> and it's a different melody too. But I don't know, I kind of found that tip to be kind of helpful and it's something I've been kind of wanting to experiment and explore. Whether I layer that underneath um, a riser or what, I don't know. I thought it was just kind of unique. It could potentially, you know, bring a fresh sound to the productions I'm making in my music. He made very good, informative videos and like, like I said, like a lot of times he'll make videos on his own tracks and he'll dive into those tracks and kind of show, you know, a lot of the small details and the ins and outs of everything so his music's great which is one thing but being able to uh, actually see how he creates it and arranges everything is really useful too for uh, for people so Giannis Rasmussen I would definitely recommend checking out his channel the next guy I wanted to talk about is a channel I've been watching since probably like 2015 or 2016 and uh, I feel like I can kind of contribute a lot of the things I'm doing to this guy His name's Daniel James, and if you watch like orchestral composition videos or like video game music or things like that, you, you may have kind of stumbled onto his stuff. But yeah, back in like 2015 or so, I uh, was just kind of going down the rabbit hole on YouTube one day, and I saw this video from him, and he was kind of doing like a, a walkthrough of um, the Hans Zimmer percussion library that Spitfire Audio has. And a lot of times in his videos, before he shows like the ins and outs of the sample library, he'll, you know, play a small track that he wrote using it. And when I heard that track, I was so blown away because like I had no idea what like contact was or, or really what sample libraries were in general. It was like whole new territory for me. So I was blown away that someone could make like movie quality level soundtracks and like trailer music like off their uh, off their computer. I thought like to make music like this, you had to basically just have the connections to work alongside like a, a big orchestra and everything. And I knew for me at the time that was 
that was not a possibility. Um, if I ever had the possibility to write with an orchestra, I definitely wouldn't know how to write for the orchestra because I really had no practice. So seeing his videos and him showing, you know, how to make that kind of music with these tools, like, opened up my whole world to, you know, sample libraries and stuff like that. So, of course, I binged watched his stuff and quickly found out what Contact was. So. I started, you know, I bought Contact and then bought, you know, three or four libraries to get started and then the rest is history, you know, you start collecting more and you build this huge list of all these different tools and yeah, it was really helpful for me. And, you know, to this day I still watch him. Uh, he does a lot of like live streams and kind of uploads those to YouTube. And those can typically be like two to three hours long, so they're, they're pretty lengthy, but I mean, it's kind of like all raw and unedited, like you're kind of watching him create new tracks from scratch. And so there's a lot to take away and a lot to learn from that. You can kind of see all the different tools he goes to, whether it be, you know, sample libraries or maybe he reaches for a certain, you know, compressor or reverb or delay or whatever. Like just seeing that hands-on kind of thing, um, kind of being like a fly on the wall essentially watching him create music is really beneficial. So. That's someone I wanted to kind of highlight too for this list. Um, the third one I want to talk about is a YouTuber producer named Kyle Beats. If you watch YouTube, you make music, you watch production videos, all that, you've probably came across like an advertisement on YouTube for his stuff. Like he's really known for the drip plugin, um, this whole like two clicks and it's you know and it sounds good kind of meme that comes from Kyle Beats. And regardless what anyone thinks or what I think of the drip plugin, it's it's kind of irrelevant because I think his YouTube stuff's pretty interesting. I feel like the reason I wanted to include him on this list is I feel like he's kind of different than a lot of other like music producers on YouTube. Like the things I like about uh, Giannis Rasmussen or Daniel James is they go really in depth with, with what they're doing. But to kind of contrast that, Kyle Beats is kind of more of, um, he just doesn't go like as in depth with stuff. You feel like a fly on the wall, but he doesn't necessarily go into production tricks. You just see him work and put sounds together. And um, I think that kind of format is is pretty pretty helpful to watch, you know? It's, it's a little bit different than what everybody else is doing, um, but it's like entertaining. I think, I think the way he does his videos kind of attract maybe a wider audience, maybe some people that are just getting into music production and aren't ready to be overwhelmed with all the technical things that um, can get into that. So Kyle Beats is good in that way. And it's like entertaining. Like I feel like a lot of the stuff he does is almost like vlog styled stuff. So, you know, you can see him, aside from making music, he's kind of doing day to day stuff or, you know, collaborating with other artists and things like that. And I felt like that was um, pr pretty cool to watch too. I also kind of admire and get inspired by his kind of like entrepreneurial spirit as far as selling like not only beats but like sample packs and now plugins um, I think that stuff's all really cool and kind of applies to some of the stuff I'm doing you know I'm kind of releasing my own sample packs these days and stuff too so I kind of find that inspiring even though we kind of make totally different sounding sample packs and totally different styles of music I still feel like I can kind of learn and pull things from him and just kind of do it in my own way so yeah I think Kyle Beats makes that list for me. The fourth channel I want to talk about is a YouTube channel called Trailer Music Weekly. And Trailer Music Weekly isn't like a music production YouTube channel. In fact, all they do is they take trailer tracks that have been licensed in films and TV spots, trailers, just marketing campaigns in general, and they upload it to YouTube. Mind you, not everything they upload these days is stuff that's been licensed but you can if you go to their channel you can see the tracks that have been used in certain campaigns and then you can see the tracks that are just uploaded just for the sake of having music on the channel but it's all really good but i really like trailer music weekly and i've mentioned them on this channel before because it's really useful especially if you're just starting out in trailer music to kind of study the music that is landing in trailers you can kind of stay on top of like the trends and the you know productions that editors and music supervisors are picking up on. So I think that's a really valuable resource. I mean, there's lots of like epic music um, YouTube channels, which is great too. And some of that stuff, you know, gets licensed, but I feel like I always like Trailer Music Weekly because you could actually see what 
this song was used in and then you can go back and reference the trailer and hear how it was cut in, into the trailer and everything like that so I feel like that's a really valuable resource too of course I, I like to watch lots of just trailers in general whether it be trailer music weekly or if I actually watch trailers from you know all these big production companies but sometimes if you're starting out it's nice to hear the songs without dialogue and sound effects baked into it because the editors you know they chop it all up and all that so sometimes it's nice to just listen to the track the way it was written and uh, kind of study how things are mixed and how they're built and study the whole structure of the track. I found myself doing that a lot when I first started out, so I wanted to add them to the list because I feel like that's a really valuable resource for people. The last channel I want to talk about today is actually someone who isn't music related at all. He's got a background in like audio production and making music and he actually takes music that he writes and throws it into his videos but his channel is not really about that kind of thing um, the channel name is 1000 and 1000 is like a, a muralist a painter um, he designs t-shirts just everything art related in that kind of medium I like his stuff a lot I discovered him I want to say kind of somewhat recently, within the past couple years or so, he posted a video and it was basically like he would draw anything that people wanted on Fiverr for like five bucks or something like that. And he had like a 24 hour window to draw and deliver all these images to the people that were paying him. And like as a viewer, I felt like completely exhausted by the end of it. I thought that I, I was just, it just looked like so much work to cram into a 24 hour period not to mention the fact that he's like filming himself the whole time too so there's the whole video aspect on top of like trying to grind and get um, these these drawings out to people and they you know they were actually pretty good drawings too you know so I think I admired 1000 for you know that kind of work ethic and I thought that was kind of a creative video idea and then the other thing too that kind of drew me into his stuff was I kind of feel like his artwork kind of loosely resembles work from an artist called Alex Party. Alex Party has done a lot of work for, you know, different bands and stuff. Like, some of the albums that come to mind are all, like, albums from, like, The Used. Um, he's done a lot of the artwork for them. He's kind of just got a very unique style that's very much Alex Party. And so when I saw 1000's work, I kind of thought that it was kind of similar in a sense. I mean, I can look at a 1000 piece and an Alex Party piece and I can tell that they're two different artists. But they kind of do this, they lean into this like kind of cartoonish, somewhat creepy in, in some some works. In a sense, I don't know, there's just very, it's just a very unique art style. I feel like they're, they both use pretty vibrant colors in their work too. Um, and that's another thing I liked a lot with 1000's work. But yeah, so the reason I like, like 1000 and wanted to include him on this list is because even though he's not necessarily a musician, or he doesn't at least make his channel about that kind of thing, I still feel like it's really helpful as a musician to watch other artists, you know, kind of build and scale a business um, off their passions. You know, sometimes if you're feeling uninspired, and you know, maybe you're in a creative rut, sometimes the best thing you can do is look elsewhere from where you would normally look, you know? If you're watching lots of like beat producers or something like that, or trailer composers or whatever the case is, and you're like, you know, I've watched this kind of thing over and over, but like I want to do something fresh, or, or maybe it's a personal project, you're just feeling like you're in a creative rut, sometimes looking elsewhere and looking at different sources outside of music can kind of regenerate that creativity and you can get inspired from all different places. And that's something 1000 does for me personally. Um, sometimes I like just binge watching his stuff. I just really admire all the things he's he's done. You know, he not only does he do like murals and paintings, but he also designs like t-shirts. And recently he did this big series on creating like playing cards. And he kind of had his community help him design these cards. And so it was kind of this whole multi-video process. And then uh, the Kickstarter went live for it and it got funded in like 10 minutes and I think he set like a $10,000 goal and by the end of it like they had like they had raised over I think two million dollars or something like that so it was completely insane but I just like watching those kind of things I think I think it's cool watching people you know have those wins that do things creatively so as a musician that that really inspires me personally so that's kind of a reason why I wanted to add him to this list but yeah um, I also think that like some of the most creative people that you'll find 
they're just they're just really good at hiding the things that they steal from others. Um, you know, like I feel like as musicians, we're all we're always like borrowing things from other people. But you know, if you know how to hide that, sometimes it can come off a little bit more original. And I think that's just how it goes. I think I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that that's you know that pushes you personally to get better and learn new things anyways. So anyways, guys, I wanted to make a quick video. I hope this list was helpful. Maybe there's some artists and musicians here that you had never heard of. And if not, I highly recommend checking them out and maybe subscribing or whatever. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my list. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.